Hello everyone, um, the new project that we're going to have a go at doing this week is a portrait of a dog. Now some of you, I'm hoping, will be able to get a portrait of your own dog, a photograph that you can work from, uh, but for those of you who can't, photographic reference um, or something that appeals to you. If you're taking your own photo, can I suggest that you try and take the dog not face on so that you're looking straight at the nose but sort of three quarter head so uh, the dog's turned to one side and as you can see I've got my portrait sketched up to, onto a 16 inch by 12 inch pad ready to paint lightly sketched in 2B pencil um, not with enormous amounts of detail but some very fine structure lines so that I can uh, follow some of the shape um, in advance, on my little pad, I have worked out the colours that I'm going to require. So I've worked out that I'm going to need raw sienna, raw sienna a little touch of an orange, burnt sienna, burnt sienna and van dyke brown, sepia, sepia and a purple which was mixed from Windsor blue and alizarin crimson, and then this sort of warm grey which I used a neutral and van dyke brown. Um, so whatever dog that you're going to paint, get your palace of colours worked out in advance, just test them all out, back of an old sheet of paper so that you know what you're going to do. Now, the one thing you need to think about is depending upon the colour of your dog and the way the lighting's falling, are you going to need to mask any areas? And I will do. So I'm going to put some masking fluid down. Now some of you may or may not have masking fluid. Uh, you might have someone and never used it before. So if you've never used masking fluid before, it uh, comes in a bottle, a liquid masking fluid, sometimes it's yellow, blue or white, this one's a yellow one, and whatever you do, do not apply it with one of your good watercolour brushes, it will ruin your brushes. You can apply it with something called a colour shaper, which is actually a rubber tipped point. You can also apply it with a cocktail stick if you've got one, and I'll put a little splodge down there. That will dry and it'll go sort of transparent when it dries and then you can paint over it and it will retain the area of white paper. So you can use something like this or an old brush to apply it or you can use um, something called a ruling pen, I call it a mapping pen, but a ruling pen um, which you submerge into your uh, masking fluid and you can actually get fine lines with it. And if you've got white hairs on the edge of your dog portrait, you might need to actually apply um, masking with that. So that is for me going to be the next stage is to put masking fluid for, on my picture just on the end of the dog's nose, basically, and a couple of whiskers around its mouth. Some of you may not need to mask at all, but that's the first stage. Now that my masking fluid's all been applied, as you can see, I've put it over the dog's nose, a few fine hairs around its muzzle. And because my dog has got a collar on and there's some light coloured stitching against a brown collar, I've just put a little bit of masking along the edge of where the stitching goes. And for some highlights, although I say highlights, they're actually gonna be pale blue on the uh, sort of metal of the collar itself. But I've masked them out first or parts of them out first so that that will come off be left with white paper and I can tint it later. Now I'm all ready to go with my lightest mix of colour. So using a size 12 brush I've got all my colours mixed in advanced and the first one for my dog is very light. It's a start from the top of your dog coming downwards so you're not dragging your hand through everything and I've got a very diluted um, for this particular hound a, a raw sienna very diluted and I'm going to apply that over most of the main head of the dog and I'm just going to come into the ears slightly um, and wash that colour down because we're going to do a lot of wet in wet. I'm going to avoid the eyes because I'll treat them as a separate entity um, and I've got some kitchen paper ready so that I can mop colour back but get the colour down quickly with a big brush so that you can um, then drop other colours in it because I want it to work wet and wet with this so I want to take my raw sienna mix right the way down there's going to be a natural break uh, for me at the collar 
so I can treat this top section separately. But this is going to vary for whatever dog you're doing. Any shadows cast by his muzzle are going to be put in much later, so I can actually wash the colour right underneath, ignoring the fact that it will ultimately be be lighter, uh, be be darker. But I can take that wash right the way over. Now, just around the nose, I'm going to use a little bit of water because I've got more grey tone coming on the nose. So I just picked up some water on my brush. I can take that wash right underneath, down the side here, and over there, and on here. I don't want too harsh a line to form. So again, on that ear I can just use a little bit of water and bring some colour in. This is all wet in wet, so that's, while it's still wet, I'm going to put in some of the more sort of orangey tones. So I've got a little bit of orange that I want to drop in. Quite a lot of orange, actually. That I want to drop in and let it bleed. It doesn't matter if it travels. I'm not gonna panic, I want it to be soft. So letting the colour actually travel while it's wet. I'm going to come in around the muzzle of the dog, around the side of the nose. It's all still the light orange and I can also bring some in. This will dry quite pale. We're working wet in wet. This won't be very strong at all so no need to panic. And if you get puddles of colour forming, again use the tip of your brush just to mop it up. Uh, where else shall I go? In fact, just come over the top here and get the top of the dog's head in. some of that orange over above his eye. Right. So that's now started to dry a little bit. Um, if there's still a shine on the paper, you can continue to drop uh, the colour in. So I'm going to move to a slightly smaller brush and I've got a bit of a, um, quite a strong same mix, the orange and the burnt sienna, but I've actually put a little bit of crimson in this as well. I know this looks really powerful, but it will dry a lot lighter. And I don't mind that it's travelling, just let it travel because I can always mop colour away later. But I want a, a little touch of really strong colour because it won't end up looking anywhere near as fierce, but a little bit of that warm colour coming through so I'm using the point of a really good but this is a size 8 brush but it's got an excellent point to it and the paper is still damp enough that the colour is travelling once you see the shine disappear off of the paper stop because you if unless you deliberately want to get hard edges if you want a soft edge it's fine but we will get to the stage where you'll start to get to hard edges. Now, I want to retain a little bit of the light just on the edge of the dog's ear, so with a damp brush, I've washed the brush off and wiped the excess on kitchen paper, and I can just pull that light edge back again so that I haven't completely lost the touch of light on the edge of the ear. Anywhere else. It's nearly dry now, it's quite warm in here, so um, I think I can get a touch more down in this section. And I'll go back to a bit of burnt sienna, just pure burnt sienna as well, and drop some of that in too. Down, down here. A little bit on the edge. Now, that bit, can you see, that end has started to dry. This bit's still wet, so that's fine that end has started to dry so I'm not going to go any further there just use a touch of water on the brush clean water just to soften that round uh, anywhere else I need to come in 
I've got to make sure that my burnt sienna mix is thicker, thicker mix of paint than the colour I've already put down, otherwise we'll start to get these cauliflower effects happening. So be careful about the strength of your colour when you're dropping wet in wet. This will ultimately go a lot darker and it is beginning to dry so I'm going to be a bit cautious about what I put down. Right. I think it looks a bit odd but for stage one that's fine. Now that we've put uh, the lightest washes over the entire portrait, uh, the only areas that I haven't got done anything with so far are obviously the eyes, the nose and the collar. So I'm going to now deal with uh, the eyes first um, and looking at the lightest colour in the eyes. For my dog, it's got this sort of yellowy golden colour. So although not the whole eye is as light, I'm going to use a small brush and I'm actually going to wash that colour over virtually the entire eye. I will then be able to come back later and lift out highlights um, because if you have no highlights in the eye, even if the photograph you're working from the dog doesn't have a highlight in his eye, it looks so much better if you put a highlight in, gives it much more character. So I'm just going to use a little bit of water and fade that golden colour off as it comes towards the corner of the eye and leave that to dry. The eyes will get built up in a whole series of washes. Um, so I'm not going to try and do the entire thing all in one go because I won't have any definition. And on this side, there isn't hardly any light at all, so I'll take that gold colour over the whole eye, leave that to completely dry and come back later. Now, next section is to move on to the nose of the dog and try and deal with the lightest washes. Remembering that I've got highlights which are all masked off so I can take my washes now over the whole thing. So I've got a warm grey mixed. Now I use neutral and add a little bit of a, of a brown into it but you can mix greys if you don't have one in your box. So you can mix greys by using a alizarin crimson and Van Dyke Brown, um, Elizabeth Crimson and Viridian Green. Really unlikely combination, um, but if you get the balance right, you will make very attractive greys. Or you could try Cobalt Blue as an alternative with Burnt Sienna, and that'll make a warm brown, a uh, warm grey. So you can try different alternatives if you don't have greys in your box. Payne's Grey, which some of you may well have, um, has a a lot of blue content so if you want to warm it up just a warm colour added into that. So I can wash this colour over the entire dog's nose because I'll be able to put defin in, definition in later. The only thing that I do need to do is I don't want a harsh line on the top edge so I've washed my brush off with just a bit of water on there and I can fade out the top of the nose of the dog. On my picture I don't want to really hard edge on the dog's nose so I'm just going to use the point of a larger brush this is my size 8 again and I'm going to fade that. A lot more work will need to go into this later but I'm just trying to keep my edges soft at this stage so I can fade that up and come back to it later on. do for the moment. Back down to the lower section and look to see where my greys need to come down and I can bring grey all the way through. Here you can see where the masking fluid is being revealed uh, as I come round and I can just dilute that grey a little bit so it's paler around this section and it starts picking up a little bit of, of sort of gingery colour, so a bit of my burnt sienna diluted, drop that in so we can wash that round into that bit and again water on my brush. Now I don't want to lose the hard edge around the nose, so I'm being careful coming around the edge of the nose there and again 
fade that out, knowing that I can come back. A bit of colour accumulating at the bottom, so tip of the brush and just wipe the excess off on kitchen paper. And then I can deal with this side as well. I'll come back and define the nose much more later on, but I just want to get that grey down. So come all the way down the jowls of the dog with this warm grey tone. And although his jaw, lower jaw, is totally in the shadows and much darker, I will take that colour and run that right o over that Again, it'll go darker later, but this will hold the whole picture together. I can come right underneath for the underside of the jowls, all the way around, and pick up other colours as I go. I've got to get this roundness starting to come in. So I can go to my darker mix, which had a bit of sepia in it. And even at this stage, pull some of the sepia in. But I'm working on dry paper now, so I can control the flow of the colour. And where I want to soften the edge, again, wash the brush, take the excess water off on the kitchen paper and soften it round. Because you're working on the paper dry now, you've got a bit more control. I know the colours aren't right, but I can deal with that later. I just want to get the shape of the dog's jowls beginning to develop. So all those colours, that palette of colours that I've got ready, I can just drop into them and try things out. And I've got a degree of control because the paper is dry, so I'm moving it around with the brush. take that right the way through there so there's a strong dark shadow but I can just let the watercolour with a nice and leave a nice crisp edge and again I can come back to that later on. Now up here I want to fade this line in more it's too harsh so while well, the colour is damp I can pull it across. And then I just have to be patient and let that dry before I come back onto that section. So I will let that allow that to dry off. In fact, I could do, because the shadows on my particular dog right, run right the way down under here, I could actually pull that colour down. If I do it now, I will lose a bit of definition on the jaw. So I might, I might let that dry and come back later. But what I will do is use these stronger colours and I'll start to come back up into the rest of the dog's face and build those colours up. However, we have got white paper still remaining on the collar and while there's white paper on the page it's a bit glaring so I'm using a little bit of uh, my Van Dyke brown and I'm just going to run that over the dog's collar and basically that's the last bit of white paper that I've got left. Then I've got washes covering everything. Obviously, if your dog has got light or white fur that you're painting, then you will need to leave some white paper right to emerge it at the end of the picture, at the end of the painting. So you won't want to lose all of your white paper. But for me, I don't need any white paper except the bits that I've already masked. So I can take some wash on the collar. So that's the next stage. As you can see, I've now completed um, the sort of second layer of washes, more or less, over um, the picture, building up uh, some of the stronger details. Um, there is more to do, but I'm going to come back into the eyes of the dog now and um, start trying to get some of the surround the eyes to make them go into the eye socket. So, uh, as I am right-handed, I'm going to start with the left-hand eye and using my grey, there's little hints of grey around the dog's eyes so I can put some grey down and then again using water 
move the wash around, leaving hard edges in some places and allowing soft edges to stay in others, just washing that away. I've got a good pointed brush, it's a size four brush, which is allowing me to get right in. So this is to sort of create a nice socket for uh, my dog. Looks a bit of a stripe at the moment, but when I pick up some water and just pull the colour away with the flat of the brush and a little bit of water on it, so I get a slightly furry sort of edge rather than a harsh edge. And I can go above the eye as well and do a similar thing. And again, you have to build this up in stages. So once I've done this, I've got to be patient, allow this to dry before I can go back into the eye and do the next stage. So once I've done this on one side, I'll stop, let it dry, but I'll be doing this on the other eye. And by the time I finish that, it should be dry enough for me to move on to the next stage with the eyes. Now that the surround of the eye has started to get established, I will have to go back and do more to that, but I can now go back into the actual eye itself and um, on the left eye of my, my dog, there's the next darkest section is a sort of a, a pinky bit on the, I suppose what is in effect, the white of the eye. So I need to establish that Again, knowing that I'm going to come back with stronger colour later, but this, we're building things up from light to dark. Uh, so moving on to the other eye, similar thing on the other eye as well, but this one is slightly darker. The eye seems a little more shadowed, so I've got to bring the... reddish tone around and although it does go much deeper if I put the red tone down as a base that will be affecting the other colours that I layer on top to give a, a richer richer tone. Now above the eye I can go to my very dark mix and although it's still wet my plan is that I, it won't matter if it does actually run a little bit so again I'm using my really good pointed size 4 brush starting to bring that dark shadow which is actually underside of the dog's eyelid and I'm bringing that around the top part of the eye. If you find it easier to move to an even smaller brush you can but the smaller brush you use the less you're able to load the brush with colour. So I'm just going to bring that around and come down the other side. The eye here, and then pick up some water and begin to dilute the colour as it now goes around the lower part of the white of the eye. I've just got water on the brush, but I am going to pick up some more of the sort of alizarin crimson colour and drop that in while it's still wet, so that you get a grade, if you like, of the colour as it comes around. And I will also begin to pull that shadow across, just with water on the brush, wet it across the ball of the eye here so the colour begins to shade across just on the bit that I've wet that sort of soft furry shadow starts to emerge and I will do exactly the same thing to the other eye now I've reached this stage with the eyes, I'm going to leave them to dry, come back to them again in a while and move now down onto the nose. 
So I need to try and get the top of the dog's nose to sort of integrate. Um, and I can see a little bit of sky reflected in the nose, a bit of very dark blue coming through. So I'm just going to glaze some dark blue along, that's not dark enough, along the top of the dog's nose, a hint of blue. That's sort of the flat part of the top of the dog's nose. But again, um, use water to move the colour around a little bit so that it's not just a stripe. dark mix and just running that down the side of the nose and while it's still wet just drop a bit more in along there avoid getting a stripe it's got a hint of blue coming through and I'm going to take that sort of bluey grey down the middle of the dog's nose as a band with and then pick up some water on the brush and pull it out so it will just soften in and the same on this side bearing in mind I've got masking fluid down so I'm not going to lose all of that highlight at all. I'm picking up my bluey grey this is the first stage of darkening the dog's nose looking at the way that the light and shade falls on it. The dark nostrils I'm going to paint straight over because I'll come back later and deal with those later just using water to soften edges There's a bit of warmth in this so I'm actually going to pick up a bit of my Van Dyke Brown and drop that into the nose as well and having warmth on the end of the dog's nose will make it project forward towards you so it's not a bad idea to just have instead of a cool grey over the whole thing a little hint of warmth coming through so I'll just bring that through as I'm building the wash up and again go back to my dark grey and bring that down the side of the nose so we're working a sort of wet in wet and using clean water to push the colour around to soften edges. But still making sure that I've got light on the kind of bulbous end of the dog's nose. I want that warmth around the nostrils. So it's wet in wet but on a small scale. Hopefully, you can begin to see the shape of the nose starting to emerge. A zigzag edge at the bottom here. And because the paint's still wet, I can keep dropping the colour in start getting the shape. It gets darker as it comes around. Going back to my water and soften some of those edges. You won't get the true effect until the masking fluid comes off. And some of those highlights that we'll be left with will be too white and will need to be tinted down later but you have to make a judgment and I'm just 
just using a little bit of the umber or warmer brown, Van Dyke brown on the nose. I'll get to a stage where I have to let that dry before I can go onto the sort of muzzle part or in fact put the dark bits of the nostrils in. So I think I probably need to leave that to dry. Now that I have built up the tones considerably around the face, um, worked up some more around the eyes and started to deepen the tones, and still not got the shadows in yet, but we need to work on the uh, mouth of the dog and start getting some deeper tones there. So I'm going to go back to my strongest mix of colour and um, start to wash it in. I don't want to lose all of that uh, first grey that I put down right at the start, but I do need to um, increase the grey in parts. So I'm going to put some down with this medium sized brush and then dip into some water and use a slightly smaller brush to move it round again so that we're breaking up the edge, perhaps even pull it out. And gradually what you'll see is the masking fluid will become uh, more and more obvious but I just want to have a sort of slightly spiky edge to what I've put down so pick up water and pull the edge of it out a bit so it's not a firm edge I think we need to go dark around here again use water because at the moment the nose is standing proud too much. The bottom of the, the dog's nose and the sort of top of the mouth area, there's not such an obvious divide between the two. So I know therefore that I haven't got the, the jaw, uh, the sort of the muzzle part strong enough. So I can come down here, right around here, and again back to my water, work it in with a bit of water drop the colour in. Go out to an even smaller brush I think and bring some fine fine lines through. jowls of the dog. Just there. And now I'll move back onto this side. In fact, just notice right down the side of the nose, the jowl there, it's very dark strongest mix all the way down this edge. And back to my small brush so that I flick the edge in a bit. Again, so it's not a hard line. I don't want to get too detailed, so I use a bit of water just to wash it all in. And then I need to let that bit dry so that I can then come and put the really dark bit in underneath there. Uh, once that's dry, then I'll be able to think about the shadows. Now that I have uh, 
put some of the dark tones around the jowls of the dog I and it's totally dry I'm going to start removing all the masking fluid that I've put down now you can do this with a finger as long as your hands are dry um, and clean so I've got a couple of little highlights I've got a highlight up there which I'm going to take off and some there but only take the masking fluid off when you are sure that you have finished in those dark areas. I do want to do a little bit more with the eyes, but most of it is ready. But mainly my masking fluid is around the nose of the dog. Now don't remove this unless you're absolutely sure that everything is dry around it. And also, if you're doing your painting over a number of days, don't leave it somewhere hot. Uh, masking fluid does not like being in a really hot room or leaning against a radiator or anywhere where it's really warm. So that's taken off all the masking fluid. Now I know it's left areas that are bright white, particularly down here, way too white, um, but I can come back and tint those later just with a thin bit of watercolour, light grey or pale blue, whatever you decide, just to lose some of those white areas. But I'm going to concentrate on the shadow. So I've got lots of dark colour mixed and I'm going to start by bringing the shadows through. So um, I've got some warm tones, the same ones that I've been working with for the entire painting, but I want to start bringing through these and we're on the sort of the final stretch uh, with this. Actually, I'll move to a smaller brush as the lines get smaller so that I can come in with a smaller brush to have a bit more control. Some areas. And I don't want to have to do this um, too many times, so I've tried to mix my pigments fairly strong because I don't want to keep having to come back and do do this again. So um, I've got quite strongly mixed pigment. Now the shadow is darker as it comes down around the dog's ears nice bold shadow that comes all the way down. I haven't drawn this out, I'm just doing this freehand. But if you're not confident, then put a pencil line in first. Cuts across the collar. And I'm gonna use a small brush just to wiggle the shape a little bit more. So don't forget the shadow is falling across the contours of the dog's skin. It also varies in tone. Uh, so right underneath the ear up here, while it's still wet, I'm gonna drop in my even darker mix of color. So hopefully while it's wet, that will spread around. So this is a really strong mix of colour and I'm just going to drop it in on that side and let it move on its own. So coming back up to the jaw of the dog, I've got a really strong bit of shadow that comes around here. I put it in once but it wasn't dark enough so I need to come back in underneath sort of the cheek shadow all the way through. And at this point it comes down over the skin of the dog right by the collar and I'm using about three different dark mixes at this stage. shadow completely covering underneath the jaw of the dog. I'm painting across the top of everything that I've put down so far. I am just going to avoid the buckle. So 
something on the collar because that's got some greys in it so I'm not going to take my shadow right across that. into the folds of the dog's skin. Again, this is a slightly thicker mix, thicker in consistency, so that it doesn't run quite so far. Masking fluid is still on where the collar is, so that one can be lifted out once I'm happy with the depth of time. But you get the idea with the shadow that you can have some relatively crisp lines. soften slightly but think about dropping other colours into the shadow area it doesn't need to be just one colour because you want to have a bit of form even in the shadow areas so now we begin to see what's happening I have got some other things to do um, little finishing touches um, I am going to go back into the art on this side I have just gone in and gone slightly darker on the base of the pupil and I do need to do that on that eye there but apart from that we're kind of nearly finished um, don't forget you do need to tone down some of these areas that you've put masking fluid if I just show you a few touches so for instance here almost dirty water I'm using very light grey and I can just go over and tone down some of these bright highlights so that they're not so brilliant they'll still be there but not quite so bright white but this will completely depend upon the uh, dog that you're doing you may not have needed to use masking fluid at all and try to avoid it unless you do absolutely have to use it but there might will be my sort of finishing touches to just tone down some of these these highlights and on the nose but we're almost there 